Hello and welcome to Raisina Ideas Pod. I am Malunjo and I have with me His Excellency January Magamba. He is the Minister of Foreign Affairs in East African Cooperation. Thank you so much sir for joining oh, thank us. Thank you Malunjo for having me. My first question to you sir. Yes. Tanzania and India have been fellow travelers yep. since the days of decolonization. Yes. We of course have the history of solidarity, yeah. but in the 21st century how do we um, define our relationship? How can we build the solidarity of the past to tap into the opportunities that the future presents? No actually uh, our relations goes farther back uh, even before decolonization time. You know we are joined by uh, a pond that is called the Indian Ocean. Uh, so it's a bridge across our uh, two countries, two continents. Uh, we, are, we have a huge Indian diaspora in, uh, in Tanzania. So we are really uh, close uh, culturally, uh, economically, socially, uh, politically. And uh, of course we work together uh, towards the liberation of Africa uh, to, uh, through even after uh, through the early days of uh, a new development uh, uh, venture. And uh, this provides an underpinning uh, for us to work together in the future. We uh, are very uh, uh, inspired by India's journey uh, now to become a leader of the Global South. Uh, I believe that uh, we can complement each other uh, because we still have uh, a shared destiny uh, we still have issues that, uh, you know, we have to contend with at the global level. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, the legacy of our history and our common journey compels us to work together uh, to shape a global conversation, to shape a, a better future for the world. So we now know that Asia and Africa are both the regions which are growing at the fastest rates yeah, globally yeah, yeah. and also both the regions are trying to integrate yeah. regionally. Mm. So are uh, we competitors or are we natural partners? What do you have to say about that? No, we're definitely partners. Uh, uh, there are a lot of interdependencies. Uh, there are a lot of complementarities. Uh, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, we, sh we share same issues uh, and challenges of uh, underdevelopment. Our people have the same aspirations and ambitions. Uh, we, it's important uh, uh, and we will succeed in shaping uh, uh, global conversations and actions if we work together, uh, if we join our voices. Uh, and absolutely, there is absolutely no way we could be competitors. And there are some examples, tremendous examples, where we have worked together either in the United Nations in the group of 77s, in the non-aligned movement, in the Commonwealth, for countries that are in the Commonwealth, uh, to uh, shape a future that we want. So we see uh, a lot of complementarities uh, that uh, we have to exploit uh, for us to be able to uh, be successful uh, as uh, partners. Now, India, Middle East and Europe have mm. formed the IMEC. Is mm. it time for India, Middle East and Africa to form a community or maybe an Asia-Africa corridor? And uh, how do we create infrastructure which yeah. works uh, for all of us? No, it's important uh, because uh, we have to do trade and trade is facilitated by infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure requires massive investment. Uh, infrastructure connects people, move goods, uh, and facilitate development. Um, so uh, the key thing for us is to be able to design uh, these mega projects uh, that are, are critical for us to um, uh, connect. Uh, you know, uh, mobilizing resources to do that and capacity to do that is something that uh, is important. It's something that uh, uh, countries as India can take a lead because there are examples of success here uh, in doing so. Uh, we, of course, will continue to um, rely on India's leadership in that regard. Uh, but Africa is ready, uh, is ready for this partnership. Now, SDGs are something which mm. are a priority for mm. all of us. Yeah. And yet we know that we will not be able to achieve our goals by 2030 and yeah. we need a new arrangement. Yeah. So is it time for us to conceptualize and uh, think about it together? No, I agree. Uh, you know, as you know, SDGs were formed in the framework of the United Nations um, and re they relied on um, a country's cap capacity, 
political will uh, and ability to pursue them and implement them. Uh, I would say that uh, because there's argument uh, that probably we were overly ambitious, but uh, from our perspective, we felt that uh, the goals were uh, reasonable, uh, they were achievable. Uh, I think the key thing is that uh, between the time that uh, we uh, put them forth and now, uh, a lot of upheavals have happened in between COVID and, 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 and wars and so forth. Uh, I think that uh, we probably need to reimagine uh, development partnership uh, to ensure that uh, we have different set of frameworks uh, in which we can um, operate under or operate in uh, to pursue development. Uh, United Nations framework is one. Uh, which is important because it brings our, all of us together. But uh, we see value in uh, uh, what we call plurilateral coalitions, uh, groupings or individual countries work together uh, in a flexible manner, in more efficient and effective manner uh, to make sure that all these development aspirations are realized. Lastly, mm. and most importantly, mm. how do we reform multilateral institutions here in That's Security Council? That's down? a big one. Uh, do you think uh, the introduction of African Union into the G20 was the correct step forward? How do we shake up all other global institutions? No, it was. It was. Uh, and uh, congratulations to India because this happened during India's presidency. Uh, it gives Africa a seat at the table. Uh, you know, G20 is a forum where... Uh, big decisions are made. Uh, the future of the world is decided. Uh, and uh, for Africa to be given such a table is, is, is important. Uh, it's just now for us to organize ourselves in a manner that uh, our participation in G20 is optimal. Uh, and it uh, results in the objectives that were, uh, were envisioned. Now, in terms of the reforms of the United Nations, that has been a conversation over the past uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, it requires a tremendous political will. Uh, the way the United Nations is set up now, it provides uh, a very powerful uh, voice to few countries, members of the Security Council and permanent members of the Security Council particularly. So any attempt to democratize the United Nations, uh, which is to dilute their power, will always be resisted. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to us. Uh, you have uh, 193 countries, which is members of the UN, and you have five, and actually one, uh, that can refuse a decision that has been made by 192 members. Even if you ask a seven-year-old, they will tell you that does not make any sense. Uh, so if the United Nations is to become a proper forum for pursuit of development, democratic principles, justice, it has to be reformed. Uh, this is a conversation that we must have, and we must have it openly and frankly. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it, it, it really has to we really have to interrogate the intentions of countries in the P5, uh, what they profess as democratic values, they have to be uh, demonstrated through their openness to change uh, and to make United Nations more democratic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.